Hi, Clarissa. Good Hi, seeing Clarissa. you again. Good to see you as well. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself and your role at GigWage. So I'm the chief of staff to our CEO at GigWage, which really means I've had the opportunity to see across the organization, uh, really helping elevate his role and impact in the organization, as well as take on special initiatives, like work with great partners like Green Dot and Go to Bank, um, and help solve problems across the organization. Great. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, so I'm the vice president um, in the retail division at Green Dot, uh, specifically for financial service centers, um, where we issue and sell different products um, for Green Dot in the alternative financial services space, uh, primary, primarily, excuse me, lenders, check cashers, um, different community uh, financial service centers across the U.S. A lot. We do a lot. <laughs> Not too much, but. I understand earlier today that you were on a panel for um, Diversity Deconstructed. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how that went and what you talked yeah. about? Yeah, um, the panel was Diversity Deconstructed. It was for the Rise Up and Amplify cohorts uh, as a part of Money 2020. These are initiatives that help um, put women in, in certain elevated positions for mentorship and connectivity as well as people of color. Um, and it was a phenomenal panel. There were other women um, from JP Morgan and Pfizer, as well as Radish, which is a UK startup. Uh, so the, the panel was diverse, right? That was, that was the first thing. But we spent a lot of time talking about, um, over the last several years, the word and term DE&I has become very popular, if not fashionable and necessary. So now that organizations, big and small, have needed and accepted the DE&I mission, what next, right? What does it really mean to be diverse? What does true equity look like? And, and what does inclusion look like day to day in our tactical activities? Uh, so that was, you know, the foundation of the panel. That sounds uh, really interesting. So, you know, as we talk about DEI, you know, one of the most uh, recent things that I've been hearing is how does the B that gets added onto there um, impact that overall initiative and that's belonging. Yep. And so what would you say um, is the most important facet in that entire trendy, you know, shift to being more yes. inclusive in the workplace? No, I think that's a great question. It's interesting because smaller organizations have different challenges and opportunities than large ones and um, belonging really is the ultimate goal. But it's, it's very hard to even track and quantify because it's a sentiment but we all know it's the ultimate um, you know, destination. I think we, we, we talked about the fact that if people will just take a step back to realize that it's okay that people don't want the same things as, as I do, that their lives look different, their backgrounds look different, where they came from, what they want. For example, Fiserv talked about the fact that they have a, a policy for people's pets, because some people don't have kids, right? And they, they need support. and that, People's lives look different, A, and B, true inclusiveness is really just looking around the room and making sure that people feel thought of. Now, we can do that in many different places in the professional organization, but these are basic things that most of us learn right in the home. Yeah, and I think it's really important just to be mindful in general of our differences. You know, shifting away from... Um, you know, just thinking about diversity in terms of color and race, right. and, but it's more than that. It's how we think. It's how yes. we, it's how we learn. It's our co different backgrounds that we've come from, and you know how to be more uh, inclusive of everyone's yes. different experiences to make people feel that they belong to your organization. Yeah, and, you know, at Green Dot, we think that that's very important. Um, you know, over the last year, we've also made that shift to ensure that our employees feel included. Um, we've done a lot of different initiatives over the last year to really try to bring the workforce together, especially in a remote environment. Yes. You know? So doing different employee resource groups. Um, are there different things like that that you've been doing, you know, yeah. um, or that you would suggest, for, especially for a remote workforce, to stay connected and feel inclusive? This is a topic that came up a lot. And I think in larger organizations, these, you know, um, kind of employee resource groups is a huge trend. Um, and I think there's there's a lot of opportunity for involvement. Of course, it takes you know resources and funding. In a smaller organization, we talk a lot about the fact that you have to do it in the very small and tactical ways. 
Craig, our CEO, talks a lot about how you have to just hire intentionally. And if you have a recruiter or an agency or a vendor that won't bring you a diverse talent pool, you'll never hire diverse talent, right? And so you just have to force yourself to do those very hard things. Recently, we hired a phenomenal vice president. She was pregnant at the time we hired her. And, you know, she was she was fearful of would that impact her ability to get hired and perform at gig wage. Um, and, you know, of course it didn't. And we were, you know, we gladly brought her on and gave her maternity leave, you know, months after bringing her on, she actually came on to help support our card initiative. Um, and those moments are just so real, right? And, and she'll pay that forward. That's truly defining culture. Yeah. And then you build loyalty, you know, amongst oh, your employees. You know, just knowing that, you know, in a very natural time <laughs> where, you know, most folks would be hesitant to interview or step out, you know, in that particular time of their lives that we make it more normal, right, to yes. do so. And so, um, you know, Green Dot especially has tried to diversify even where we recruit, you know, so we work with the Mom Project is one of the companies we work for to ensure That's that awesome. we're, we're placing ourselves where different women and people of color are, right? So not just um, in places where the traditional, you know, recruiting standpoints, you know, like where can we go? Can we recruit at HBCUs? Can we recruit at different um, places where more diverse candidates are? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely necessary. Well, Clarissa, it's so great to connect with you. Thank you so much for joining us here at Money 2020. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you, Crystal. You're welcome.